The last method of differentiation is what we're going to call logarithmic differentiation. So there are two uh, main types of problems where using logarithmic differentiation is going to be very helpful to you. And one of them, it's absolutely necessary because there's not another way to do the problem. So one type of uh, problem is if you have an exponential uh, a term where both the base and the exponent are functions. So if you have something of the function, or something of the form f of x to the g of x power, your, your power rule does not apply here because your exponent is not constant. Your taking derivatives of exponentials doesn't apply because your base is not a constant. So if both of these things are variables, you have to use logarithmic differentiation. So let's do an example. Let's say our function was x to the x power. So when you see something like that, you should immediately think, I have to use logarithmic differentiation because power rule exponents don't work here. So the method for logarithmic differentiation is you have to take the ln of both sides first. So let's call this y instead of f of x. We'll get that ln y is equal to the ln of x to the x. Now, remember that using your logarithmic rules, x, ln of x to the x is the same thing as x ln x, because if you take the ln of something to a power, that power can come in front. You see, by doing so, we've removed the problem. Now we don't have a variable to a variable power, and if we wanted to do the derivative of this, we could just do the product rule. So here's the part you need to keep in mind. Now when we take the derivative, I urge you when you do your work on these, do all your simplification and make sure you do the derivative of both sides of the equation in the same step. It's really easy to get lost if you take the derivative of this side and you're still working with this. Uh, and then you might take forget to take the derivative of that side. So. In your derivative step, the derivative of ln y would be 1 over y times y prime, or dy dx. Remember, because of implicit differentiation, every time you take the derivative of a y term, you have to multiply by y prime or dy dx. Here, to do the derivative of x ln x, we just need to do the product rule. So, we would get 1 times ln x plus x times the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x. So you can see on the left side now we have y prime over y. On the right side, x times 1 over x is just 1. So we have ln x plus 1. And we're trying to find the derivative, so we're solving for y prime here. Well, in order to do that, we need to multiply by y. But the last thing we want to do is because our original function was not an implicit function. We had a function of x. We don't want to have this y when we're looking at our derivative, but you know that your original function, the y, was equal to x to the x, so we can just plug that back in. And you get your derivative, I'll write it as dy dx this time, is x to the x times ln x plus 1. And that would be your derivative using logarithmic differentiation. So that was an example of when you have a variable base and a power, um, you have to use logarithmic differentiation. So next I'm going to go over another example of when you don't necessarily have to use logarithmic differentiation, but it's going to make your life a lot easier. So the times that I'm speaking of now are when you have a product or quotient of three or more functions. So you know that if you have a product of two functions, you can use product rule. If you have a quotient, you can use quotient rule, or change it into a product and use product rule. If you have a product of three different functions, or two functions on a numerator and one on the denominator, something like that, if you try to use product or quotient rule, it gets really hectic because you're going to have to use multiple steps of product rule or quotient rule. Instead, using logarithmic differentiation is going to be better. So let's, let me give you an example real quick. Let's say we have the function e 
to the x times square root of x plus 2 all over x squared. That was our function, and we wanted to take the derivative of that. Well, you can see, you, can't, you could do quotient rule if you wanted to, and then when you did the derivative of the top, you would have to then do a product rule inside your quotient rule. You could do it, it would take a while. A better way to do this is using logarithmic differentiation, so let's see why. First, let's take the ln of both sides, like we did before. So we get the ln of this whole thing. So you can see the reason that we wanted to do this is because if you have a uh, natural log of a big product or quotient, that can always be split up. Remember that a product inside a log is the same thing as adding two different logs. A quotient inside a log is the same thing as subtracting. So this breaks down into ln e to the x plus ln, I'm going to write this square root instead as a half power. And then in our last term, since it's on the denominator, it's going to have to be subtracted ln of x squared. You can see now that all three of these are going to be relatively simple. So before we take the derivative, remember, like I said, try to make your derivative go all in one step. We can simplify all three of these. ln of e to the x is just x. When you have ln of x plus 2 to the 1 half power, the power can come in front. We're going to get 1 half ln x plus 2. And when you have ln of x squared, that's the same thing as minus 2 ln x. Now we got it as simplified as possible. This is the best time to take the derivative because now all your derivatives are going to be as easy as they could possibly be. Here we get our y prime over y when we take the derivative of ln y. The derivative of x is 1. Here we have the 1 half that sticks around because it's a constant. The derivative of ln of x plus 2 would be 1 over x plus 2. And we don't have to worry about any chain rule because the derivative of x plus 2 is just 1. And here we would get minus 2 over x because the derivative of ln x is 1 over x and we just have it multiplied by 2. We're almost done now. All we have to do is multiply over by y. We can simplify this stuff a little bit by saying this is going to be 1 plus 1 over 2 times x plus 2 minus 2 over x. And remember, just like in the one we did with you had a, when you had an exponent, uh, a variable in your exponent and your base, our function started out only as a function of x. We want our derivative to only be a function of x, so you need to plug back in for y. So finally, Instead of y, we need to write this entire term. So we get e to the x, square root x plus 2, 2 over x squared, times what we had there in parentheses, 1 plus 1 over 2, x plus 2, minus 2 over x. And this right here would be your final answer for your derivative. So to recap real quick, the uh, two cases in which you want to use logarithmic differentiation are when you have a function whose base and exponent are both variables, or when you have a product and or quotient of three or more things, because it allows you to split them up and derive term by term.